Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. Very crazy boom slang. When I say crazy, I just, that's with a capital C. Um, he's totally insane and his cage is totally filthy. So, he was just, I was going to feed him, but he got caught in, oh. he ended up in his trap box. Yeah, it's probably not like he's the uh, tipping sensation. Now I'm holding the lock closed door with my finger until I get the latch latched. I don't want Mr. Boomslang coming out. I certainly don't want to wrangle him because we're in this full COVID uh, spike and ending up in the emergency room is just not a good idea. This latch. Whoever made this thought it was a good idea, but as it turns out, it's difficult at best. That's unfortunate. Stay in there. There we go. Yes. Freaking effort that it was worth. It's not even working correctly. Okay, so I'm going to abandon that. And uh, I'm going to zip tie it just to make sure that uh, he stays in there. Um, I don't see a zip tie handy. I know we'll get one across the way. Um, yeah, there's that bag of small ones. I okay. don't need a big one. All right, in retrospect, I had previously turned this eyelet vertical, and the reason is probably because that hook was not working anymore. Oh, crap. Not long it's enough? Too short. We would have to maybe string two together. You know, pull too hard and snap it. At the latch or the door. Yeah. Need another one? It's gonna need another one. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, now that we have a properly sized and now Mr. Boomslang can go into the storage container while I service his cage. 
which is going to require the jaws of life get the glass out. And we'll just move this boom slang out of the way so I can work here and uh, move the glass and clean the cage. All right, well, this is what I call the jaws of life. Normally, they're for a carpenter to clamp pieces of wood together, but this one you're able to reverse it, so instead of crunching stuff together, you can push the handle and make it things get pushed apart. And that's why I sort of call it the jaws of life, because with all these cages stacked, the weight is such that it doesn't allow you to remove the glass panes for cleaning purposes unless you use this tool to remove the glass. And now we can get rid of the water bowl. Mr. Boomslang has turned virtually completely black over time. If you go back in history of the videos, he was a beautiful youngster in this turquoise green uh, animal. And then, as usual, turns perfectly jet black, uh, like every other Boomslang that I've had. Um, Mike Perry, um, the owner of the snake farm in Africa that milks uh, uh, venomous snakes for a living, providing the venom source for making anti-venom to the South African vaccine producing company, says that uh, um, he just thinks that the ones that were getting exported are coming from an area where uh, adults normally turn black, but it has nothing to do with the, the way we're keeping the animals, because you know, he has a heat source and it's you know, UVA, UVB, even though snakes don't really need UVB. Uh, lizards do, but snakes generally don't. Um, but uh, they all turn black. So this is sort of screwed in, so I'm going to have to release this and get it out of the way so I can uh, more easily remove all this little crap from his <laughs> cage uh, and tidy things up. He, he does like to urate on things. Uh, all right, um, had a little malfunction with the camera, so not exactly sure where I left off, but the next step is just to exchange the substrate, get as much of the crap out of here as possible, the urate on the leaves. Um, I'm probably not going to do a whole lot with uh, because I would have to remove, remove it, take it to the sink and clean it. I may do that, I may not, uh, depends on, uh, on how I feel about it at the time. So let me get on with this because this is the very boring part and uh, we'll get back uh, later when Mr. Boomslang and his trap box goes back in the cage and we can safely shut the doors. Yeah, you know right now again because of COVID, um, not having uh, my assistant uh, over to help with husbandry because one, we only really sort of handle the snakes right now is, you know, when only when necessary and we can, in this instance, actually, if they have a trap box and we catch them inside, we service their cage. Um, we spot clean, but nobody comes out to visit. Um, 
but as Lori was saying, one thing that I've learned over the years keeping snakes, especially certain venomous snakes, is they have a peculiar scent and you could you could put me in a room that, with no lights on, with no light source, and you could introduce a boom slang or a mamba, and I can tell you, I could tell you that I would be able to say that would be a mamba or that would be a boom slang in, in the room with me, not that I would like that to ever occur. <laughs> um, I'd like to give a shout out to my friend Arno at Snake Plate Assistant in South Africa. He was very instrumental in saving this four-year-old little girl uh, from a black mamba bite. Um, some uh, doctor at a hospital dismissed the bite as some sort of insect sting and gave the child some antihistamine. Uh, and uh, the young girl went downhill from there. Um, Arno and his uh, partner were able to get the child transported to another hospital where there was a physician with anti venin and who was trained by Arno on the proper procedures uh, to treat mamba bites. So, uh, the child was just on door, death's doorstep when they arrived and, and uh, the doctor administered the antivenin and a few hours later the child was giving the thumbs up sign to Arno. Uh, so this is what, uh, uh, what people who know about snakes and snake bite do on a routine basis, but this was an extraordinary case um, because without Arno's intervention, uh, this little girl would uh, would have uh, passed. Um, you know, by the time they got to the to the hospital where the physician knew what he was doing. Uh, girl was barely breathing, uh, had ptosis, which is drooping of the eyelids, your typical uh, uh, neurotoxic envenomation symptomology. So hats off to Arno and his partner uh, for saving that little girl's life. Uh, this was a young black mamba that managed to find its way into her toy box and uh, you know this time of year mambas are are getting really wound up and it's not peak season it's the beginning of the season but uh, nonetheless uh, are no uh, partners uh, have a serious high level of respect uh, in the community down there uh, for doing, uh, doing the community a great uh, service. So I don't really need the vacuum to disinfect we don't want him to be too irate that we made his cage less stinky than it already was. <laughs> Snakes get very despondent when you uh, ruin their uh, their decor. You know, I'm not going to even. I pulled the large chunks of poo and shedding off of it. I will sort of spread this out. And now all that's left to do is sort of untangle it a little bit and a little bit more nitrogen. 
nicer looking foliage. I had to cut this branch off right here because the dumbass was uh, touching the metal grate uh, under the lamp and got burned. He's the only snake in 40 years of snake keeping that I've had that managed to burn himself. Uh, that's what a dumbass he is. Uh, but uh, yeah, he pulled it off and uh, you can see the scars on his back. He's healed, but was totally uh, unexpected uh, because, like I said, most snakes are smart enough not to get burned. And apparently, being a psycho doesn't uh, include you into that uh, that select group of more intelligent snakes. Okay, so. Now I'll put some substrate in, clean up the glass so it can scare the crap out of Lori and I because <laughs> we can really see through it and it sometimes looks like there's no glass there. And we'll get Mr. Boomslang back in there. And once he's back in there, we'll just leave him alone since he's not interested. You know, I was going to feed him today, but he decided that, uh, that he was uh, not interested and treated to his trap box. Alright, this cage has been refurbished. Although I didn't scrub his, uh, his plants down. Oh, just having those windows clean makes a huge difference. That is a real pig. He's piggy. accidentally opening the door. Yes. That would be a bad thing. Yes. I have one pile of it of boom slang anti-venom and I hope I never have to use it. Alright, so since he has this uh, this behavioral problem and can be quite explosive, we will just uh, Open his uh, doorway and uh, hopefully I like positioning the water nozzles so it gets them really wet uh, because they don't like that. <laughs> um, I have to give them something to be angry about because otherwise normally you know I do nothing to make my snakes upset. Um, so, there we have it. Mr. Boomslang has a relatively clean cage. I'll make a note in his, uh, his uh, file. He's known by both his name and by his cage location uh, uh, that he had a substrate change. And when we do this, try to get do this once a quarter. We spot clean in between. But as I've said in the past, I am not the kind of snake keeper that drags my snakes out of the cage once a week to clean them because this is very disruptive to the snakes uh, well-being. You're dragging them out of their house, you're throwing them into a bin, and uh, it's also somewhat dangerous to do because there's always a chance you can take a bite. So with that, uh, we'll move on and continue feeding. <laughs>